It feels like the dust is settling after what has been a pretty crazy few days for Manchester United. The Premier League season, thank God, that's over now. And Eric Ten Hag has been unveiled as Manchester United's new manager. It was exciting. We had his first press conference, his first interview with the club. It's great to see him there at Old Trafford smiling. But I want to do a video today where I run through and explain exactly why I think that Eric Ten Hag deserves a £200 million plus transfer budget this summer. I'm going to prove to you exactly why. I'm not just pulling that figure out of thin air. Eric Ten Hag said all the right things in his press conference. I think he controlled it and he showed his ambition. But if we don't show our ambition as a football club to match that, it will get off to a bad start. Now, let me explain that in full in this video. Please consider, uh, if you do enjoy it by the end of it, going down there, hitting the subscribe button, hitting the notification bell as well, and joining the community. But let me explain this one because I feel pretty strongly about it. And I want to try and use some evidence to explain exactly why. Now, the first thing I want to do is go back to look at what's happening this summer, right? We know full well that we're losing Paul Pogba, Jesse Lingard, Matic, Cavani, Mata, Grant, all on free transfers. That's six names off the list. And if you're looking at a combined wages, you're probably looking in excess of a million pounds a week, really. Certainly when you've got Pogba's and Cavani's in there, that's over 500 in total together alone. Add into the fact that you're probably going to see the likes of maybe Phil Jones, Anthony Martial, Dean Henderson, Andreas Pereira. Uh, there's more players. I can't remember the other ones. There's four there. I've definitely forgotten some. But there's a huge amount of outgoings that are already happening this summer with those six players living on a free. And we should be selling more. Players are on the fringes who aren't really going to stay at the club. That's budget in itself. But it's for me, it's the context of everything. Context is everything, I think. Maybe it's because I've done a history degree. But I really like to try and look at context. And that's where I'm putting these figures from. So let's go back to look at the first summer under Louis van Gaal. You can see how big, and you remember how big that summer was. We signed Di Maria, Shaw, Herrera, Rojo, Blind, Falcao. And we go down there and we see how much he was back to the tune of. Is 175 million Louis van Gaal got in his first summer as Manchester United manager. Things have got more expensive since then. We fast forward to the first summer under Jose Mourinho. Paul Pogba came in, Henrik Mkhitaryan came in, by Ibrahimovic on a free, back to the tune of nearly 170 million pounds. Got more expensive since then. The first summer under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the first season under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, because I'm including Bruno Fernandes in this. Harry Maguire, Bruno Fernandes, Aaron Wan-Bissaka and Dan James and Igalo on loan. Jeez, 10 million we paid for that. 211 million pounds that he was back to the tune of. I think you can see where I'm going with this. We keep hearing the idea that Eric Ten Hag might be getting a budget of what? 120, 130, 140, 150 million. I just do not think it is enough. In the context of everything, and I'm not just talking about Manchester United. If we head over to see what uh, Jurgen Klopp was given in his first summer in charge, that's a little bit different. He goes down there, it's only 71 million, but then we look at the two summers after, and he was given 156 million before then spending 170 million. They spent plenty under Jurgen Klopp because the squad was not in the conditions that it needed to be for Jurgen Klopp's football to be able to be played there. And look what's happened since. They invested correctly and the recruitment was smart. But they invested heavily. And they invested in Jurgen Klopp. We go over to City and we see what happened here. In the first summer under Pep Guardiola, John Stones, Leroy Sane, Gabriel Jesus, Gundogan, Bravo, who was sold the next summer, Nolito, Moreno. He was back to the tune of £193 million. And then what happened next summer? They backed him to the tune of £285 million. When they signed a Porte, Mende, Walker, Bernardo Silva, Edison, Danilo. Wow, a ridiculous amount of investment. And look what's happened since. And again, this is circumstances and everything. We are where we are. We know where we are. Look at this league table. Manchester United there in sixth place. 35 points behind Manchester City. And 34 points behind Liverpool. For context, we're 36 off bottom. We're nearly the same amount of points off bottom as we are away from the top of the Premier League table. And if this man is really going to be tasked with toppling those two teams who are sitting pretty at the top of the Premier League, 35 and 34 points ahead of us, the reality is, is that 130, 140 million simply isn't going to be enough. 
it won't be enough for the summer that he wants and the summer that he needs. Now, we're linked with a host of players. It could be Frankie de Jong. Uh, I wish it was already in Chouameni, but it probably won't be Chouameni. It looks like he's going to go to Real Madrid or Liverpool. It could be Christopher and Kunku. It could be Yuri and Timber. It doesn't really matter the names on that list at this moment in time, really. It just matters that this man is given the backing that he needs. And this isn't a case of, ah, oh, Sam, it's, just a, it's not just all about investment, X, Y, Z. Oh, it's all about spending money, money, money. There is a reason that Liverpool and City are so far ahead at the top there. They spent big. They spent huge under their managers and they spent smartly. That's where United falls short. It's not particularly been down to a lack of investment over the last five to six to seven years. It's been down to a lack of smart investment though. Because if you look at how bad, if, if we look back at all these signings made under Louis van Gaal, my word. Luke Shaw's still here. That's it. We go over here. Our daily boom was good. Go over here. Pogba. Well, we know what's, what, what's happened there. Mkhitaryan. Terrible. Bye. Matt, I think he'll be sold. And that's the other player I think will be sold. Ibrahimovic on a free. And then we go to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Maguire. Wow. 50 million for Bruno. Still a good price. Aaron wan Bissaka. Right. Dan James. Right. Oh, we made a profit on him. So hmm, maybe that wasn't too, too dumb. We've got to be better. We absolutely have to be better. Somebody who I wanted in at the club to help make that happen was, of course, Paul Mitchell. Now, we've got official confirmation from Monaco that Paul Mitchell will be staying on at the club after they've appointed a new CEO. So it won't be Paul Mitchell coming to Manchester United and helping us revolutionise our transfer market ability. But I, I, I think it just kind of infuriates me to think that Eric Ten Hag is going to get, what, 130 million? 100, 130 when Louis van Gaal, let's go run through these numbers again, Louis van Gaal was given 175 million, and that was eight years ago. Jose Mourinho was given 167 million, and that was six years ago. Solskjaer was given over 200 million a couple of years ago, and we're outside of the top four, and we're trying to catch Liverpool and City. Of course, that 35 point gap is not going to be closed over one transfer window. It's going to be closed over, let's hope, a two to three year period where year on year we make smart signings, our squad improves, and Eric Ten Hag can be the man that steers that ship in the right direction. But I just, I just do not think it is going to be enough money to give Eric Ten Hag 130, 40 million. What's that? Realistically, three, four top level signings? Three or four, maybe. Depends how much we spend, right? But Eric Ten Hag really impressed me in his first interview, in his, in his mannerisms, in, his, in, his, yeah, in how he carries himself. I believe in him. Maybe that's because I want to believe in him and I'm going to feed myself a certain narrative. Cool, you can say that if you want to. But I trust this man. I trust in Eric Ten Hag's process that he's going to start at Manchester United. And I trust that he's going to help take us towards where we want to be because that gap there is so unbelievable. 35 points behind City and 34 behind Liverpool. To think that we could topple that without... We're now in a period where we have to overinvest Because we've let that gap become so big, what may have worked before won't close that gap. So in the same way that Man City under uh, Guardiola here decided to spend 290 million there... And then they spent 190 million. That's what's that? 200. Oh my God. I can't. Nearly 500 mil they spent. My word. But look, they've won the title in four out of the last five years, I think. They've won the title again this year. They're 35 points ahead of Manchester United. It goes to show that if, if the investment's done correctly, that's the sort of thing you can expect. And I think the investment can be done correctly under this man. I trust that the signings we'll make under him, under the stewardship of him, will be. Far better. There'll be smarter signings. There'll be profiled signings. I think we'll perform better in the window. But it has to be with the right budget. So I just wanted to do this video because in my opinion, I think this, this proves that Eric Ten Hag needs that £200 million budget. Not only by looking at how much Van Gaal, Mourinho and Solskjaer were all given in their first seasons. All more than the 130, 40, 50 million that we're hearing. Not only for the fact that City are 35 points ahead of us. That Liverpool are 34 points ahead of us. Not only the fact I've shown you how much they were given in their first summers. 
we're outside the top four as well. And the Glazers typically spend bigger when we're outside of the top four. Everything points towards this summer's transfer budget being 200 million plus, And I think it needs to be. And I'm including player sales in that. I think you're looking at likes of Bai, Herrera, Jones and Martial and Henderson. You should be able to get somewhere between 50 and 100 million in total for that. Added on to whatever Eric Ten Hag's been given as a budget. Added on to the extra wages that are coming from the likes of Pogba, Lingard, Mata, Matic. All leaving the club on a free. It should be done. Cavani too and Lee Grant. He deserves 200 million plus and I hope the club gives it to him. And I think if, if, if we don't and we leave and we sell him short this summer, don't let him get off on the wrong start, on the wrong foot. If we're truly doing this process and we're truly rebuilding this club, I'm sorry, but the investment's going to have to be pretty major over the next couple of years. That's how poorly run our squad has been. It's not down to a lack of investment over the last five, six, seven years. It's down to a lack of smart investment. But let's hope that that can change under Eric Ten Hag. I wanted to do this video because I feel quite strongly about it. And now the dust has settled on Ten Hag being in, we can have these conversations. We can really focus on transfers for the next four weeks now our new manager is in. And no doubt I'll cover all of it here on United People's TV. But you let me know what you think about that. Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's going to be too much? I like to think I've proven that he does need that much money if we really are going to close that gap on Liverpool and City. You let me know what you think, though, in the comments, as you always do.